Hello, this is David E. Hilster. I'm a critical thinker, science dissident, and I'm here to tell you the truth about science. Something your university professor won't tell you, the mass media won't tell you, and certainly those science evangelists won't tell you. Today, instead of ranting and raving about how mainstream science is wrong in relativity, is wrong in particle physics, is wrong with the Big Bang, I'm here to talk to you about not that plate tectonics is wrong, but there's a better way better solution than plate tectonics and that's called expansion tectonics. Now I came across this back in 2008 when I saw this video, wonderful video which I'll show you here from Neil Adams and the moment I saw it I was absolutely taken by it. I knew this was correct and I went nuts and we created a database, probably the biggest database entries of all the people working in this area since uh, back probably a hundred years. So I want to show you this video to show you what I saw, and we'll talk about why expansion tectonics is a little bit, a little bit better, a lot better than plate tectonics, and give you some places where you can find out and discover yourself. Because don't trust me, as I always say, trust what other people say and your own data, and looking at it yourself. So let's take a look at Neil Adams. Neil Adams happens to be a cartoonist, a comic book artist, very famous for his series on Batman has done very well for himself and he's also very much a person into what he calls the growing earth and yes the earth is not only getting bigger but it's gaining in mass I totally agree with him about that we'll talk about that in another video but let's just take a look at what, what expansion tectonics is and how what it looks like we come to the earth which well grew to get here the way it is now here is our world, our planet Earth, floating in space. We will be going backward in time, imperfectly, but done in a very disciplined manner. Please notice there is no subduction, no rotation of tectonic plates, no twisting, no form fitting, no altering shapes or sizes. It would be impossible, impossible for these continental plates to fit together perfectly without this being true and yet the upper tectonic plates fit together perfectly on a much smaller planet. Yes, there's been some erosion, landslides, blah blah, but overall this activity is insignificant. Wow. I, when I saw that it was like, wow. They all fit together. How could that be? Of course, we see Africa and uh, uh, South America. That's real easy. We can see that. But actually, everything in the phys everything on Earth comes down to a ball. You saw it. And almost nothing changes in size. How do we know that? Well, it turns out in 1960, the, um, whoops, 1960, a map came out of the, of the floor of this, the ocean. And something was very, something very shocking came up and that is the oldest sea floor was only 180 million years and that's where you see the blue the the sea floor was literally being made and is being made as we speak it's being made it's coming up molten and it's spreading out it's getting bigger so why isn't the earth getting bigger well according to plate tectonics the earth's radius has to stay the same so in the middle where it's going like this they have to have the rest of that new stuff being eaten up somewhere by subduction. So here's a continent like the United States and this new uh, seafloor is going under it. That's what they call it. They call it a conveyor belt, sort of conveyor belt. Problem with that idea is when you take away those colors, the youngest colors, the red all the way to the blue, a little bit at a time, and that's what Neil Adams did, it all comes to a ball and it all fits together. The chances of that are astronomical. In fact, there's even a, a, a page on Facebook that talks about the astronomical chances of that happening. And that's absolutely true. Now, this has really amazing implications because one of the problems is uh, Stephen Hurl, who is a mechanical engineer, discovered and who uh, uh, actually found this out through mechanical engineering is that dinosaurs can't survive today. You throw a whale, which is the biggest animal that ever lived onto the earth, out of the water, it dies. That is because the pressure of gravity is too big for that body. Same way with, with dinosaurs. They couldn't exist in today's gravitational field. In fact, he maps all the biggest the animals of these certain types down. Land animals we're talking about, and they get smaller and smaller and smaller. 
That means gravity must be getting bigger and bigger and bigger. That the Earth is not only expanding its radius, but it's also gaining mass. We're going to talk about that in another video. So that's where it comes from. Other implications that it has is that um, we have flora and fauna that are only exist on the coast of the Americas, the west coast of the Americas, but only exist in an isolated island here or there in the Pacific, like a, a lizard, a, a ring-tailed lizard or something like that. And that lizard only is on one island and a place in, in, Amer in the Americas on the coast. Why is that? If it was in the island, oh, it must have swam, or someone picked it up. If that happened, why aren't they everywhere? Well, it turns out when you close off the Pacific Ocean that those two areas come right together, and they were just simply split, and then they, of course, uh, are different now today, millions of years later, but they're absolutely found in both locations. How could that be? Well, this explains that. Now, where do we have information about this? We, when I got, When I saw all this, in 2008, I went nuts. I was creating a database of information. Uh, now it's now in a wiki. I've, I've transferred all that database information. We have 13,000 pages in our Wikipedia for people who work outside the mainstream. One of the areas you can go to up here, quick links, you can see organizations, theories, models, but topics you can see, in fact, expansion tectonics. When you click on that, you're going to see, in fact, uh, all these things that we've put together, which are in fact are about, I think it says 215. So these are people, there you see Neil Adams, uh, you see other people, and one of the people that you should probably really take a look at is, his name is James Maxlow. Now James Maxlow is the premier scientist, in fact he's the one, he's from Australia, he didn't believe in expansion tectonics, he was a critical thinker. What happened with him was, is that he started to plant, plot the South Pole. He knew of expansion tectonics because Samuel Warren Carey, a very famous person before him, uh, was an expansion tectonicist. They called it expanding Earth at that time. Well, it turned out that James was given the baton and he didn't want it from Carey, but he took it anyways. This is all on the website here, uh, on, on his uh, website, uh, you can, uh, on his page, on our uh, Wiki Wikipedia, what happened is he started to plot the South Pole, South Pole on the planet. We know by, by fact that the South Pole started in Africa, that actually the South Pole is Africa. Now, plate tectonics says, well, Africa moved on the same globe and it just moved down. Expansion tectonics says no. What happened was it was smaller. In fact, if you look at it, when you, when you look at Neil Adams' video, you'll see, in fact, that, in fact, yes, a Africa is wrapped around as and is the South Pole. The South Pole existed in on the African content, continent. As it grew, it got bigger. Africa, simply because we, we expanded more in the Southern Hemisphere, that the South Pole kept moving, moving to, to its present day. When James Maxlow, Dr. James Maxlow, geologist, plotted this, and saw it fit perfectly on an expanding Earth, it was done. He coined the, uh, the word expansion tectonics to put himself different from plate tectonics and has been fighting the great fight. And in fact, if you go back to our, our homepage and you go down further here and you look up at expansion tectonics, we have the best encyclopedic uh, explanation of expansion tectonics, just in, in, like Wikipedia, but they won't put it there because Wikipedia is a consensus of science. So unless everyone agrees with it, it's wrong or it's pseudoscience. That's why we have created our own Wikipedia because critical thinkers should be allowed to give their idea of how the universe works. There's not only one way it could work. There are different ideas out there. We're not discovering God's equations. It's another story. But anyways, this is the best it's almost 32 pages if you were to put print it out, but it has geological evidence. It's got equations on the expansion. In fact, if you look at the expansion, the expansion is not linear. It is accelerating. We'll be fine because it only grows the same height you are is how much the Earth's radius grows during your lifetime. Now that seems like nothing at all, but in geological terms, that's fast. And so you can read all about it here and the information, of course, uh, and you can see there's the famous map that really started it all, and it, but the reality is expansion tectonics was actually thought of before plate tectonics. 
but that's a long story. Read it for yourself. But again, exp expanding Earth, what are the objections from plate tectonics, peop uh, plate tectonics people? Well, there's subduction. Well, if you have an expanding Earth, why do you have subduction? There's some limited subduction because the Earth didn't expand all together like perfect. It's actually expanding more like this. And because of that, you have subduction. Yes, it goes on. You have some things going on. But everything you can explain in geology can be explained better by expansion tectonics. The other thing they say is you don't have a mechanism in physics for mass increase. Why is you get mass increase? Well, that's not too hard because suns blow atoms apart. The nucleons, uh, nucleuses are separate from the electrons or whatever particles go around the, the, the atoms and they get put back together inside the earth like in other places and manufactured there. So water, oil, methane are made inside. In fact, Nature and other places are now saying that Earth is probably manufacturing water. It didn't come from, uh, from the uh, comets because there's not enough of that. So there's a lot of evidence now starting to point toward expansion tectonics. And that's one of the fascinating... Why do we find oil everywhere? The squash dinosaurs did not make all this oil. It is being manufactured. It's abiotic. It is not fossil fuel. It's abiotic, meaning it's not from origin, life origin being manufactured inside. It's very fascinating. It involves all of physics. It's really, really a great subject for you to get into to get your feet wet in the critical thinkers arena. In fact, James Maxwell is going to be at our conference from July 19th through the 22nd at our CNPS conference in Vancouver, British Columbia, Vancouver. He's going to receive a lifetime award. I'm going to meet him in person for the first time. He's one of my heroes. Love the guy, and you're invited. If you're in that area, come on, come on in. Uh, the conference is open to all. You don't have to have a PhD in astrophysics. In fact, if you do, most likely you're stuck and you're with the Flat Earth Society is what we say today. But anyways, don't take my word for it or any el any else anybody else's word on faith. You look at it yourself. You stay critical. You stay thinking. And... I think you're going to find that this is a much, much better model. I'm David Hilster, your science therapist, trying to heal you from all the mainstream gunk out there. Ciao for now.